Hey, welcome to this edition of State of the Weather Address. In this video, I'm going to talk about a potential sudden pattern change that could be setting up across the United States here as we head in towards late September. I'm going to unveil what this map means here in a second. We're going to talk about potential temperature changes, the storm track, a potential change in the storm track, a complete flip, precipitation amounts, and I'm also going to go over a couple of forecasting secrets as well for you weather enthusiasts because I know you wanted some of those back. So I'll bring back the old school weather decoded structure here. So comment below. Do you like cold waves or heat waves better? And we're going to start a weather decoded power thread in the comments. We're going to have some fun with this. I know there's people on both sides. So comment below. So let's get right into this. First half of this video, I'm going to talk about this map I made. The second half of the video, we're going to go into analysis. We're going to take a deep dive and look at the weather models. We're going to look at the storm track, the specifics, and I'm also going to go over a couple of forecasting secrets. So what's this map saying? Well, this is through late September, for late September, around the, uh, the probably the 22nd through about the 30th of September. This is when this is for the last week or so. This is your temperature anomaly. So how much above or below average? And we're looking at about approximately about two to four degrees below average here in the east half of the United States. This is a complete reversal. It is red hot across the central, really all of the United States the week before this. But the big thing here is it's gonna change. Now you might be thinking only two to four degrees below average there, but compared to the week before, it, it is a complete pattern shift. So. This area right here, there is some indication that it could be even more below average. That's where the general consensus is, maybe even four degrees or more. Then as we head out to the eastern or the western United States, we're looking at potential for two to five degrees below average, really in the yellow. And then this area, I would say somewhere in the four, maybe even the six degrees range, especially as you head in the northern U.S. here. So that's what it's looking like at the moment and in this area in between there's gonna be a lot of uh fluctuation in temperature especially in the northern plains where i think you're gonna see several short waves several waves hit that area and potentially some a, a lot of severe weather so what's causing this well what's causing this arctic air to spill into the eastern united states well it's something called the pna this stands for the Pacific North American Teleconnection, and essentially it's measuring the 700 to 500 millibar heights. It's a little bit below the jet streams, kind of in the mid-levels. This is happening across North America here, especially the East Coast, West Coast of the United States. And typically, when we get a positive PNA, which it's trending towards, you're going to get ridging out west and troughing out east. Very similar to that map I was showing. Now that you know, it's every case is unique in and of itself, but that's typically what happens. Now, if you get a negative NAO, when you get warmer waters here in the North Atlantic, that can actually enhance this trough. You get a very strong ridge out here, can enhance the trough, and you can get even more powerful cold air outbreaks, some storm systems as well, storm systems in the southeastern United States. Now, what's a pattern look like for a positive PNA? Typically high pressure ridging, like I said, out west. And low pressure systems sometimes riding up a trough that comes out in the eastern United States. Your precipitation can be above average, kind of in the southeastern United States, maybe as far east of the mid-Atlantic mid region. Temperatures, this is anomalies for November. I'm going to make a uh, map for September and all the other months one day. But for now, this we're going to look at November. This is what I had in the archives. Above average here for the northern United States, I would extend it even farther to the west a little bit. And then above average or below average temperatures out here, kind of in that two to four degrees below average range for the southeast half of the United States. That looks pretty accurate, at least for the cold air. I would extend it just a little bit further north as there's a, a couple things that would indicate that. So that's what the uh, typical pattern looks like. So what is it uh, trending towards, positive or negative? This is the GFS computer model, the PNA forecast. This is kind of around now. It is negative. It's trending towards negative, and that's kind of right in time for this heat wave. Now, the thing you're going to want to watch here, when you start to notice the pattern change, it's around this inflection point right around here when it starts to go from negative or it starts to trend negative, and then it's going to start to trend positive. So you're going to get a flip, and that's when the pattern is going to start to shake up, around the 15th or 16th. We're not going to notice the full effects until around the 22nd or so. This is when it goes to positive. Okay, this is when you're going to start to get the ridge in the west and the trough in the east, and it could go very positive as we head towards later in the month. So 
you know, you're going to get the pattern change a little bit before, but you're going to start to notice the effects when it hits the positive uh, range. And the yellow line is the average of the GEFS model, and uh, the red is the high end, the blue is the low end. So there's some members that are indicating higher and some that are indicating lower, but the yellow is the general average. This line in the between here is the trend line, so where things are kind of trending in general. It's, you can see it's clearly trending positive overall. So that is what the GFS is saying. Now, what's it look like on the map? So this is the second half of the video here. I'm gonna get this situated here. And this is the 500 millibar height anomaly. So we're kind of looking that in that PNA range that I was talking about, the 500 millibar. This is a couple of days from now. You can see that ridging here. This is uh, the pattern, you know, around right now. Very warm temperatures, red hot temperatures across the United States. Whoops. And then also some troughing out west. This is going to contribute to some severe weather events and MCSs across the northern plains, maybe even the Midwest as well. That's going to bring above average precipitation and some severe weather events even for this region. So be on the lookout for that. And you can see those troughs kind of move into that area. But overall, through the 20th here, we're at the 20th above average. But you can see right around the 18th, look what happens. Right when that inflection point happened on that PNA graph, this starts to die out this starts to die out look what happens around the 18th 19th the pattern starts to flip and as we get towards the 22nd it really starts to get organized you get a nice ridge out west and a trough out east why is this important well the jet stream starting to move south we're starting to get into kind of a, a rhythm here a, a pattern a new pattern here as we head towards the fall this is something to watch for the winter this is kind of starting to look like my winter forecast so that is definitely interesting to watch where you would get cold air out east and warmer uh, air out east, not west. Now, it's always, always going to be like this, but just kind of an average. This is the 25th, 26th, 27th, and you can see consistent troughing out here in the eastern, uh, really third of the United States and lots of ridging out here. Now, the question is, how far south does this troughing go? And uh, that, that'll be interesting to watch. But I think right when it starts to change, right around the maybe the 21st to 23rd or so, you'll see a storm system that rides up the East Coast. How strong that is, that's a little bit far out to say. But I think you'll see a nice cold front that comes south. And then what's going to be happening here is this is kind of a linear look. So you'll probably have a nice long cold front, a long cold front with some nice moisture that rides up from the southwest into the east, east half of the United States, east uh, maybe third, bringing some, some storms and some good rainfall. Now out west, this is something we're gonna have to watch here, uh, is the northwestern United States in the corner here. How far do, north does this ridging go and how far south does this troughing go? You'll get some waves that ride this ridge and bring in precipitation for the northwestern United States. So I think you could see some above average precipitation here in the far northwestern United States. Below this, it's going to be a desert. It's going to be warm and it's going to be dry. There's really no lift to support much precipitation, especially in California. You know, I'm really rooting for these, uh, you know, the people down there. But We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get a nice pattern later in the month. But maybe some above average precipitation here, above average the week prior for severe weather there, and then potentially some above average precipitation down here. So let's look at that in more detail here. We'll look at the temperatures after that. We'll look at this first. You got this low pressure system right now moving out on the 14th. It's gonna bring a cold shot in this area, but it's not gonna last long. You're gonna get precipitation, or you're gonna get uh, very warm weather across much of the United States. Pretty kind of boring, except if you live in the northern plains where those severe weather outbreaks could occur. Nice low pressure system. Uh, out ahead of that, you're gonna get some uh, precipitation and potentially some thunderstorms as we head towards really all of this week into next, well, probably all of this week, probably Sunday through Sunday, essentially. Okay, this is the 20th now, the 21st, 22nd, but here's our pattern change around the 22nd or 23rd. And like I said, I think you're going to see a cold front. You're there. Look at this high pressure, nice high pressure out here. It's going to build these black lines, are your pressure lines, the red lines are your thickness lines. It's essentially measuring the average temperature in the atmosphere, the kind of the column in the atmosphere from a thousand millibars to 500. So a thousand to that level we were looking at earlier measuring the average temperatures. Lower values, colder, higher values, warmer. Watch them move south. 
these black lines. Typically, you know, you're going to get your uh, your low pressure system, your south winds on this side, your north winds on the back side. It's going to be kind of angled in just a little bit more due to the Coriolis force, but you're going to get nice north winds behind it. Look at this low pressure system. Probably a big, uh, good old cold front coming out there eventually and lots of precipitation out ahead of it. So as this pattern changes, you might get a decent amount of rain in the east. Look at that. Nice, healthy dose of rain. Potentially some thunderstorms as well. High pressure starts to sink in here into the, uh, the central eastern United States. Those height lines start to dive. You get a nice cold blast that spills out from Canada. And it just kind of sits out uh, through the 28th out here in the uh, eastern United States. There's your, uh, your kind of your core of your high pressure. And it's a lot lower out here um, for the most part. But your highest, coldest air mass is going to be in the eastern United States. But notice the uh, northwestern United States. Can't forget about those people either. Um, and this is the 26th, 27th, 28th. I think uh, there's going to be definitely an opportunity for some ridge riding waves over here and waves just on the, the east side of the trough. And you could get some above average precipitation out here in the northwestern United States. How far south that goes, that's still in question, but looking good for that. So precipitation, this is over the entire model run. So we'll go out to 384. Again, probably most of your bulkier precipitation gonna be in the southeastern United States as that pattern changes. Might get a nice wave of precipitation as that pattern changes out there. Uh, but maybe above, slightly above average for this region here. Above average for this region out here where those severe weather events occur with those short waves that kind of move through. And then uh, probably some above average precipitation out in the northwestern United States. Not, how, not sure how far south that's going to extend, but I would definitely say out in Washington, western Washington uh, as, uh, as well. So that's what that looks like. And then temperatures. Let's look at temperatures here. This is uh, the 16th, 17th. Look at that. Red hot across the United States. 10 to maybe even 20 degrees in some areas above average. But watch what happens around the uh, 19th here. Starts to kind of bland, get kind of bland across the United States. Still pretty warm. But as we head towards the 22nd and 23rd, when that trough moves in, that is when you got this ridge out here, probably a ridge way out there, and then a trough that's getting gets pinched in the west east excuse me eastern half of the united states that's going to bring some cold air in two to four degrees of below average this is the 26th 27th and 28th this is pretty light you know for the most part two to four degrees looks pretty good compared to my map the european computer model also shows below average temperatures in this region right here kind of off and on but for the most part it's been also indicating a pattern change and definitely changes the pattern especially after the 22nd but does indicate some below average temperatures kind of in that region especially in the tennessee valley i think if you look at the all the patterns the analogs all that the general consensus is maybe this area being the most likely like i had on the map and we'll go back to that one more time here before we wrap it up so the general consensus below average again around four degrees below average in that area most likely as well around two to three two to four degrees in that area two to three two to four degrees above average out west and potentially even more than that in the northwestern united states there is some indication that it could be even more there probably some decent amount of pattern swings or temperature swings in this region here in the northern u.s and also a lot of thunderstorms so we'll have to watch that for future videos so that is going to wrap this video up now again comment below if you are a fan of cold blasts or heat waves We'll start a thread in the comments. Subscribe. We're going to release these on the regular, uh, probably within the next week or so. I'm kind of setting up all the graphics and everything and getting it structured down. So kind of experiment mode right now, but we're going to start to do a regular video here. So watch my winter forecast. I actually uh, will put it here too. I actually made a winter forecast a couple of days ago. I'll be releasing kind of uh, bi-weekly or monthly updates on those as well. So stay tuned for those as well. So check out that winter forecast and uh, subscribe. We're going to be uh, releasing videos on the regular. And uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with a friend. Hit that sm smash that thumbs up button and uh, we'll see you soon.